most people will hand wave dismiss this next potential cause of gravity, which I will present here under the moniker of rising earth. That's right, community. Z's just not going to make fun of and discredit the rising earth people. As I said previously, we can probably all agree that gravity is not a cause. Gravity is an effect. The effect of what cause? Well, some people claim that the earth is demonstrably rising at the rate of acceleration. So we're going to do, we're going to review a highlight clip of a gentleman named Dell from the YouTube channel Beyond the Imaginary Curve. So many questions that I have, you know, um, and I'm sure so many questions that you have, and we can discuss those things um, as we move forward. But it's beyond any shadow of a doubt that what we've demonstrated for you is that it's the Earth's motion that is the cause of the effects that we experience. That the Earth's motion is the cause of the effects that we experience, as I said, i.e. gravity. A lot of flat earthers say motionless Earth, motionless Earth. A pressure gradient, a density gradient, a directionality. The true motion vector is upwards relative to us as observers within this reference frame, upwards towards our feet. Okay, that's demonstrable. So now, you know, if you still want to maintain a globular Earth or a stationary Earth position or any other position for that matter, you now have to have some force that's capable of achieving uniform physical downwards acceleration. Okay, we have an appearance of downwards, but it's only visual. What you're witnessing when I let that go is a loss of momentum and the upwards trajectory. Do you understand what he's saying? He's contending that when we, from our reference frame of Earth, the ground we're standing on, when we drop something, it only appears to us as if it's going down. He's claiming that when we drop something, it actually is in stasis or it's static not moving because no force would be acting upon it it is actually the earth rising he's claiming as we have demonstrated you set a vessel of water on the table you can see the ears at the top water is displaced level as the perpendicular orientation to the true motion vector, which is the plumb, the vertical. We take straight lines 90 degrees from the plumb and we apply that to practicality in the real world. These people that are claiming forces. I'm going to put it like this. What I see in science and academia, or should I say scientism and academia, is a propensity towards orthodoxy, a propensity towards tradition and convention. Why should we commit the same fallacious act ourselves? If we as a flat earth community, if we can call it that, if we stop questioning and accept things as fact, that are merely theory, are we no better than them? Why can we not entertain this conversation of rising earth? The points are compelling. If relative density disequilibrium ceases when something is dropped and achieves free fall, why can't we explore that? Why should we ignore it? Surrounding us, acting upon matter. Oh wishful thinkers. We can demonstrate 
in any vector the recreation of the conditions of our reality. We can isolate, we can change variables, we can alter the rate of displacement in any vector. We can increase the rate of displacement in the established vector, that being in that direction. So as we accelerate things upwards, we can see an increase in the rate of the buoyant effect. When we put these things in free fall, there is no orientation, there is no buoyancy, there is no density, there is no pressure. There is nothing. It's the removal of force. So once you comprehend that the Earth's moving uniformly and a constant, that should dispel any silly notions of absurd models of Earth, like globes and stationary flat Earths. They are preposterous. You cannot isolate any of your propositions. You cannot use any of your postulations to demonstrate, to alter, to vary any of the variables in actual reality. You cannot invert buoyancy and density. You cannot increase the rate of separation, displacement of buoyancy and density. You cannot achieve any of that. So why, I ask the question, are you maintaining the belief? You have to ask yourself that question. I have given you ample practicality. If you want to try and argue against the practical, then your words are meaningless until you can qualify your position by means of practical reference and you can alter and change variables and satisfy, you know, and match the very same that we have shown you and given you, then you don't have a leg to stand on. And the naysayers and the Just to be clear, I'm not saying I am supporting this theory but I'm bringing it up because I'm not afraid to have the conversation. Here's why. Here's a little something about Z. I try to falsify all my beliefs, understandings, and the things that I accept. If something is presented as unfalsifiable, you have then ab abandoned the scientific method. So I'm not hand wave dismissing the rising earth people and the people who are hand wave dismissing must have an agenda, must have a bias. What we are showing you is accessible to every single human being alive. It's not a bias, it's not a belief. It's there for you to experience and witness for yourself. So, as we move forward, I always, you know, invite any discussion but if you have a position and you want to come and demonstrate, it must be practical. You must be able to demonstrate your position, as we have done and we can continue to do forever. I hope that it's offered you something and maybe gave you clarity on your position, because as I say, there is a knee-jerk reaction, there's an emotional triggered response. Nothing has ever changed here at this platform. It has always been about the practical. Always about the objective inquiry. Nothing has changed. The only thing that's changed is people's perceptions. And those people have to take a look at themselves and why they're operating from a bias. There's no shame in admitting you are wrong and advancing yourself and moving forward with the new information that you have. And it's not just information in the, 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 the format of rhetoric. This is information that's practical and demonstrable that you can access, that you can go and recreate any one of these tests. If you're going to make statements and claims about forces and how they act, mainly uniform acceleration of gas liquids and solids simultaneously with no displacement, no separation occurring. You must be able to isolate such a force. You must be able to demonstrate your force. You must be able to manipulate the test that we're, we're witnessing, invert it, slow it down, increase it, just like we've shown. Until then, 
you don't have a position. The position is based solely on rhetoric, conceptual idea, not practical, real-world physicality. The email's at the top for anybody that's interested and wants to get in touch with me. If you think you've got something to offer, I welcome it. I'm not interested in division, you know, um, us against them. Reality is singular, subjective. Okay? The bar must be practicality. If we do not have the bar set at practicality, we are inviting all sorts of nonsense. Hopefully this has helped you. And again, I'm probably going to make more videos. There's so much that I want to cover. Um, and it's very difficult to compile it all in one and go. So as we move forward now, I've gave the base, you know, um, foundations of the position here. All right. That's Dell, everybody, from Beyond the Imaginary Curve.